I've reviewed some pretty powerful computers in my day. We do photo and video production for work. So we're working with 100 megapixel photos, 8K raw video, and we always need to push the hardware as far as we can. Now, this M3 Ultra Mac Studio that Apple sent me as a review unit might have taken things a little too far. I've loved the Mac Studio since it was released. I think it's pretty clearly the best desktop Mac for power users they've ever made. So let's go over the specs of this review unit. It has a 32 core CPU, 80 core GPU, 32 core neural engine, 512 gigabytes of unified memory, previously known as RAM in the olden days, and 16 terabytes of storage. This is a production machine. Like this is a serious machine for serious people that aren't going to blink at the $14,100 price tag. But I've got to tell you that price for 16 terabytes of storage is eye-watering even for someone in production. Now it's kind of hard to figure out what to benchmark this against. I mean, there's not really any other computers like it around. So I'm going to be using an M4 Max that is more or less spec'd out as well. It has a 16 core CPU, a 40 core GPU and 16 core neural engine with 128 gigabytes of RAM and four terabytes of storage. It's more or less half of everything, but this is the newer M4 chip architecture. So you're going to generally find that in single threaded tasks, it performs better. And in multi-threaded, we should expect the M3 Ultra to perform better there because it is effectively two M3 Maxes glued together. I mean, I, I know it's not glue, but. So those are the machines I'm going to be working with today and I wanna see how they perform in the real world. Let's start with a couple of results. We're just in Venice and shooting with the Hasselblad 907X100C. So I've got a bunch of fresh 100 megapixel photos that I wanna process. Let's start by denoising them in Lightroom. We'll have all the same quality settings and set the timer. So I'm coming into this expecting any tasks with an AI badge on it to perform much better on the M3 Ultra. And that's what we saw here. The M4 Max took six minutes and 31 seconds while the M3 Ultra took three minutes and 37 seconds. That's great. That's kind of what you would expect. I mean, this is more than twice as powerful of a machine and it took about half as much time. Like denoise like this is a task that I think a lot of photographers don't do that often now because it is so time consuming, but as it becomes faster, it might become a bit of a standard part of our workflow to just let everything go through that and all of a sudden the noise becomes lower on every photo we take if it gets fast enough, which on an M3 Ultra it kind of is. Now for this next one, I'm gonna be running everything through another AI tool called Reblum Retouch. It does AI retouching and I've just been blown away at how well it works. I use it all the time because it's extremely subtle. Like it does not go over the top. It does not look like the image has been processed. It's very delicate in what it does. So I've been using it on almost everything that I use. And if you wanna try it, I do have a referral link down below. So for this test, I'm turning the settings up all the way, setting it to best quality, and here we go. So I know I just said I expect the M3 Ultra to do better at AI tasks, and this is running locally. Like this happens on your machine, and the times were almost the same. In fact, the M4 was a hair faster. Um, I even reran the test afterwards because um, it's just not what I expected, but they both took about as long. So I don't know. This has me questioning how this app is actually working if double the speed does not <laughs> improve the speed of, of the performance. Now to wrap things up in Lightroom, we're going to export 100 photos that are each 100 megapixels coming from that Hasselblad. Let's see how they do. And here we are again. The M3 Ultra and the M4 Max are so close that it doesn't make a significant difference. It's pretty similar export time. Um, I guess that's how Lightroom works. But I found this in general that a lot of the bottlenecks for photography are only moving forward as we get new chip designs. So this is just a good note for photographers in general. Most tasks will be improved more when a new chip generation comes out that improves the single core processing, like you want a faster CPU basically. From the look of it, Lightroom just isn't really taking advantage of that multi-threading. But if you wanna know what it's just like working in Lightroom generally, it's pretty speedy. There's still some little lag here and there like as you flip between develop modules, but it clearly is faster than probably whichever machine you've used recently. Um, this is the biggest impact on any workflow, by the way. It's not really about export times. That's not what slows people down the most. It's this ability to like just move through the files, um, quickly make changes in how responsive 
is the machine and you know what generally it is. You get the point, Lightroom's fast, but not exponentially faster. Let's move on. Now let's play with some video editing. Here's my most recent uh, project and Final Cut. This is my S1 R2 review that we did while we were traveling. Uh, a lot of it is shot in 8K, as you can see that obviously plays back perfectly smooth with my LUTs applied. The actual editing and moving through and playback of a project is the most important, and that's already been amazing on the M4 Max. So I'm not going to go too in depth on that here. Um, let's instead try and export out of Final Cut Pro. 8K timeline in 8K. It's only three minutes long, so I can't wait forever for an export. Let's see how they do. So now this kind of cuts against those Lightroom results. Obviously Final Cut Pro is doing something well here. The M4 Max takes 18 minutes and 14 seconds. The M3 Ultra took 10 minutes, you know, almost half. So I didn't really expect this because the general playback, like using the footage has all been so good with again, 128 gigabytes of RAM in this M4 Max. I didn't actually expect this big of a jump on export, but yeah, that is really excellent. And if you do production, um, you can you can see the value in that. Now, let's try Topaz Video AI. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it does an amazing job of a lot of different AI tasks like upsampling, fake slow motion where it's interpolating frames, removing noise, stabilizing, kind of everything. Uh, in this example, I'm gonna downsize a clip to 720 and then we're gonna upscale it again to 4K. This is an intense process. I think this clip is only 21 seconds long and I, I already kind of have a feeling it's gonna take a while. It never moves quickly. This turns the fans up on any machine you use it. Like this utilizes every piece of the machine. And while these are running, uh, just keep an eye on the little bouncing balls over here. Like if I create a render, you'll start to see right away that the GPU cores start to kick in. And eventually as it goes, you'll see 100% utilization. It'll just kind of keep spiking like that. And over here, you've got the CPUs. See how many cores there are. It's really cool. And in some of the different apps, it's fun to watch how they bounce up and down. I've noticed it'll jump to one batch of CPUs and then over to another and keep rotating back and forth like that in different applications. So it's always fun to watch these in the activity monitor. So the results are in from Topaz Labs and the M4 took four minutes and 10 seconds and the M3 Ultra took three minutes and 22 seconds. That's not that exciting. <laughs> it's, it's actually not that impressive. I mean, if I was doing this all the time, I wouldn't pay the, you know, twice as much money uh, to have those kind of results. It makes me wonder what like what's really happening here. Last time when I reviewed the M4 Max, a lot of comments were saying that the RAM, the unified memory is the bottleneck for Topaz Labs. So the fact that there's 512 gigs, I'm not really sure why it didn't make much of an impact. Maybe we're, we're, we're obviously hitting some other bottleneck here. If you work in the creative industry or make things on computers, you probably realize the computer's not usually the bottleneck. It's your creative output. And Artlist, the sponsor of this video, is here to help you with it. So let's check out their footage section. And you already know that they have a ton of stock footage available, but that can be hard to sort through, right? There's so much, how do you find it? Well, they have a whole new set of filters that really help out in what you're looking for here. So let's say that I'm looking for an adult group and they're eating. It does a great job of surfacing that content, but here's what I love. If you go into filters, you can also say vertical only. So when you're working on a social campaign, you can narrow it down to just those nine by 16 clips and they still match all of our parameters. But if we're scrolling around, we see something interesting on a theme that we like. There's a new button called similar footage that brings us to all of these clips that are remarkably similar. I mean, not only are they people wandering in nature, but they also all have wide angle lenses and kind of a similar vibe, similar aesthetic. They've also recently implemented drag and drop so you can grab the song that you're listening to and either drag it to favorites or one of your artboards that you're working on. And they've also made this nice adjustment to their AI voiceover page. So when you're scrolling through, trying to decide what you're like, like maybe I like this voice, but what about that cat? You can click on featured assets and it brings up all of the assets that are in that preview 
because sometimes you just see a cute clip of a cat and you want to use it in your project. But this is all the tip of the iceberg with Artlist. They have so much to offer. I promise you won't regret signing up today. So go down. The link is in the description. I use them all the time. Their music is in this video. All my other videos, Artlist is great. Thanks again, Artlist, for sponsoring this video. Now for our last video test, let's take a look in Resolve. And these are some stress test clips that I got from Cam Mackey uh, on the previous reviews. These are 6K raw that are just meant to stress things out. They have sharpening, noise removal, look creator. Uh, and you can see this is playing back pretty much at real time. Yeah, we've got a solid 24 frames per second going right now. But if we start to really crank up the noise reduction, this is ultra NR. You can see it, it drops down to four or five frames per second. The place to look is up here in the top left corner. We got four or five frames per second. That's kind of unusable for reviewing playback. You basically have to turn off the effects and then turn it back on when you export. The goal is real time. Let's see what we can do on the M3 Ultra. So here's the clip that couldn't play and we're at seven or eight frames per second. All right, I mean, it's a bump, it's not double. Like it's, it's kind of funny. I don't know how to predict when I'm going to see these results like tear things up. Like occasionally we've seen double and sometimes like here, you know, we're seeing something pretty marginal. So I don't know. It's really odd. And by the way, if you're wondering about the whole, like, why is this an M3 Ultra instead of an M4 Ultra? I know Zerbity's first questions. It's probably been addressed in other videos you already watched, but the response from Apple has generally been like, well, don't expect an Ultra trip in every M series. I don't know what that means. I almost think we should disconnect thinking about the Ultra in the same way that we think about the Pro and the Max chips because it takes some time. It's a more limited market. A lot less people even have needs for this. So it makes sense to be on a slower schedule. Let's run some intensive local AI models right on the hardware. So here I am editing this video, getting ready to publish it. I did a bunch of tests with local LLM models running on the Mac Studio and realized I made some mistakes in my testing. I was not installing large enough models. Now I'm gonna insert a quick clip from Dave2D's video where he did a great job explaining what I was doing wrong. Now there's a lot of models you can use to do this, but there's one in particular that's extra interesting. It's DeepSeek R1. Now that model, the 671 billion parameter model is 404 gigs and it has to all fit into VRAM. And I, I say VRAM because it has to be very high bandwidth for that memory. And this system, because it uses Apple's unified memory architecture, has a lot of super fast memory. So I tested this device and compared its performance over several AI models and several hardware configurations. And smaller models run quite well on the system. You don't need all 512 gigs for any of the distilled smaller models. But the big one, that 671 billion parameter model, needs the highest configuration. Now, at first, it wouldn't even run. I was trying to load it into memory, and it was crashing, and it just wasn't working the way that it should. And it turns out, macOS locks how much VRAM it's willing to allocate out of the box. I had to go into terminal and open it up and give myself 448 gigs of VRAM. But the fact is, it runs. As always, Dave does a great job of explaining things, so there's a link to his full video down below in the description. Now that I know what I was doing wrong, I will install these more advanced versions of R1 because I want to see this machine maxed out and I want to push that RAM to its limits. And if you want to see how that goes, the best place to follow me would be on threads. I will post more about this as I dig deeper. I did talk to one friend in VFX and he said the only use cases he could find when he was really maxing out all of that available memory was dynamic simulations in Houdini. That's a very specific use case. So I know he just ordered a Mac Studio. So Olaf, I hope you enjoy it and put it to use. Let me know how it goes. But that's all that I can really say about it. Um, I'm gonna test this further, see if I can find some more interesting details about it. But until then, stay tuned. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video.